Welcome back, guys, to Football Biz Podcast. As always, I'm Grayson Mortimer, and unfortunately, Hunter's under the weather today. So, I, to fill in for his place, I have a, a couple a couple special guests. The first one you guys have seen before. He's, you know, without further ado, Mr. Evan McGuire. He is back. <laughs> It is so good to be back on here, and I am ready to break down what just happened yesterday in an unbelievable football match for the ages. Yes, sir. And then joining us today as well is the young protege himself, Mr. Yeah. Matthew Kayser from New York. Uh, just man, it's just got out of high school, man. This is just crazy. Yes, he just sir. was able to he was able to to, to sneak in on uh, on his phone right now. So, Matt, yep. welcome to the show. Thank you so much. We're here. We're happy to be here, and I'm excited to talk about the craziness that happened yeah so jumping right into it so yeah obviously yesterday we had the world cup final and uh i think it exceeded everyone's expectations my, my girlfriend was actually over yesterday and and she was invested in it and she doesn't even watch football so like it, it was it was uh you know i think that kind of just says like how intense yesterday's game actually was um and and yeah fair play to to both france and argentina for giving us the final of a lifetime it's funny in my last episode i actually said uh, that we wouldn't see a bigger final, uh, like more exciting than, than, you know, 4-2 in 2018. Uh, obviously that was, you know, BS and we did, we saw a much better final. Um, you know, honestly, when it was two, nothing at in the 80th minute, uh, right when that, but right before the penalty happened, I thought that the game was, was dead and over. And then, uh, you know, Mbappe, uh, showing off his, his repertoire of abilities to bring it back to two, two, and then obviously goes to extra time. Uh, where each team uh, exchanged goals uh, and then Argentina obviously prevailing in penalties. So huge matchup, huge game. And uh, I think it lived up to the billing. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. It was, it was insane really for the fact that uh, going into like, what was it? The 80th minute, you know, it, it looked like Argentina had it in the bag. And then all of a sudden, it, it just turns on its head as Mbappe netted that in past Martinez. And then uh, going into that second goal, too. Oh, that was just a world, world-class goal. Just the Lovely way he just, volley. When he was sliding and just zoom past. And then all of a sudden, we got a game. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Do you guys think um, Emmy Martinez could have done something about that second goal? Or do you think he kind of was just unable to do anything about that? No, I think he was beat. I think I think there was definitely a case for for uh, you know that being close. To, if it wasn't for Bertrarlison, I think that would have been uh, a contender for goal of the tournament. It was just such a well well taken place shot in the low corner. I don't think there was much Martinez could have done about that. I think he did well to almost get there. Um, and yeah, I mean that goal is phenomenal. And, and Mbappe takes home the golden boot um, in in a tournament where I think there were, I mean, there was a lot of goals scored in this tournament. Uh, you know, typically we don't see guys getting eight, seven uh, goals, you know, come the final. Usually that doesn't really happen. Um, but, you know, Mbappe obviously, you know, only with two penalties as well, which were the ones in the final, um, you know, just, just, it speaks volumes to how well he, he really did play in this tournament. It just stinks that his uh, supporting cast couldn't get the job done in, in the uh, shootout. Uh, I'm looking at Hugo Lloris, especially. Yeah. And even with um, Emmy Martinez as well, you could say, oh yeah, he scored two penalties. Yeah. He had a hat trick. He scored two penalties. Yeah. Well, that's really because um, this, the two penalties are nothing to be like laughed at because Emmy Martinez, one of the best penalty savers in the world. So you really, it, it's really hard to to put that past you just as as penalties. So yeah. Nah, what Kylian Mbappe did yesterday was unreal. Like just the poise, really, to take what three three from the spot and put it in the exact same direction too in front of in front of Mar- Martinez. That that took some cojones anyway, because like even like with anyone else, they they would definitely not have especially Harry Kane. I'm looking at Harry Kane specifically. He couldn't do that. So having Mbappe do that was unreal because really I would have thought he would have been the last person to take the penalty. But no, he stepped up and took it first in the in the shootout. And I just want to add too, that was the first hat trick in a World Cup final in 56 years, which gave him the golden boot on eight goals because usually you don't really score eight goals to win the golden boot. It's usually about six, five, because the last time that we've seen someone score that 
that high of goals to win the go to win the golden boot. I believe it was Ronaldo back in 2002. Yeah. I mean, typically uh, you don't, yeah, you don't really see those, those types of goals. And maybe it's just the, the, the French gene because uh, you know, there was a, I think that's still the best ratio for goals in a world cup was, was just Fontaine back at, way back. I can't even remember which world cup he played in. He scored 13 in six games. Like, and he's still close to like that top of top of the list. Like he was one of the top world cup scorers. Uh, you know, I think he, he may have been number one at one point as well. Like, you know, French the, the French are built different when it comes to the World Cup. They're star players. Um, and I think I think Mbappe taking the first penalty actually did make sense because I think after the Brazil match, um, I think uh I think teams realize that you gotta have your your best penalty taker kind of start, get it off right. Uh, you know, considering the fact that Neymar didn't even take his pen uh in the Brazil match and you know, they went home in in tears. Um, so I think I think that. The, with with the terms of the penalty shootout, um, I think it I think it makes sense to send your 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 best guy going first, kind of get the team rolling, um, and yeah, I mean Mbappe putting it in the same spot all three times, I think shows the amount of confidence that he has in his own abilities, um, and and Martinez did almost save a, co- a couple of them, but uh, in the end of the day, he put the the right power behind it, the right placement, and uh, clearly has has practiced it when, when he's had to, to, to do it. And yeah, on the other end though, uh, Hugo Lloris could not make a save. Um, I mean, this guy's admitted in post-match interviews before that he's not a good penalty saver. Um, and, and to, to go back to your point as well with, with Mr. Kane, you can take him out of Spurs, but you can't take the Spurs out of him. Uh, you know, both, both Kane failing that penalty over the bar and then Lloris in the shootout. So uh, it's, a, it's a tough, tough one for France, to say the least. Yeah, I agree, really, especially with the fact that a lot of those Argentinian penalties, they could have been saved, really, because there wasn't much power on them. It was just really cheeky. And uh, like what Messi did, he just sent it down the middle. And really, Lloris went the right way. But if he if he would have reacted sooner, then I'm re- I really feel like he could have saved that. I forget what other one was like that too, really. I think it was the one after Messi. I, I can't think who took it though, but he did really the exact same. And Dybala's was also down the middle. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that's that's yeah, him. But... And that that really, really frustrated me. I was like, oh wow, he he he, he, sh- he should have had it. He should have had two easy saves there, but he 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 just crumbled. Yeah, I mean, in a in such a big tournament as this, biggest game in the world probably one of the best games of all time in that big of a stage uh your heart rate has to be down I feel like he was a bit nervous at that point and I feel like his nervousness um kind of messed him up in that sense uh yeah he's talked about not being the best pen saver but how is he going to improve that I mean you can't just say that and and not improve it and work on it like because now you've been seeing in more of these tournaments that like there's been more and more penalty saves like uh, Jan Sommer against Mbappe, there's been some big, big saves that people have been talking about. And now Hugo Lloris goes up and he doesn't really, sa- he doesn't save any of them. It's a, uh, it's a big problem and he has to work on it. Now, now Matt, you're, you're a goalkeeper yourself. Um, if you were in that type of situation, what would you say that, now obviously Lloris is a lot more experienced than yourself, but what, like you analyzing it as a goalkeeper, what do you think he could have potentially done better in that situation other than maybe try to just breathe? I mean, when I was looking at it, he really had no plan. He was going in there saying, like, I hope I can save this. He, he didn't do what most goalkeepers do. They, they can either lean to the side and go the other way. They could give the other opposing player a little space on the other side and go that way or go the same way to try to do them, like, like make, make them mess up psychologically or even like mind games, step forward, like talk to them before. He didn't do any of that. He seemed like he was just going to try and save the ball. I think because there's such an advantage to the striker, you have to do something to give yourself the advantage a bit more than, than humanly possible because saving a penalty is one of the hardest things to do as a goalkeeper. So to do that, you have to give yourself even more and more of an advantage. Fair enough. Yeah. And I mean, it's just, I think the, the one with Messi, especially the Messi put it slow roller right down the middle. I think if Lloris had waited, I think he could have potentially saved it because as we've seen in even this tournament, Messi's penalties are savable. They, they, they really are. 
they, he didn't do what, what, you know, the only one I think Messi scored where it was like, okay, well, there was absolutely no chance for that was the one against Croatia where he put it top pins. Not much you can do with that, but most of the other ones, he just like waited, waited, and then waited for the goalkeeper to move and then slotted it home. I think if the goalkeeper stays put, uh, like maybe somebody like Livakovic, if, you know, obviously the one that Messi scored had passed him was top ends and maybe he changed his style just because he knew that. Livakovic waited and, you know, I think if Messi did the same penalty that he did against France, I, I think I think he has a chance of saving that one. Um, but yeah, a disappointing, disappointing day for if you're Hugo Lloris. But um, something I also wanted to talk about a little bit was, was uh, you know, you mentioned Emiliano Martinez. Um, so he, he obviously did do the mind games. He did, you know, he tried to get into the heads of, of players and I think it, it did catch up to, to show and, and in his case, it's, uh, despite the fact that it worked, I think there may have been a, a, a bit of accession, hard to say, but, uh, what's your guys take on that? I think there was no accession whatsoever as a goalkeeper. There's, there's nothing that you can do. Uh, in mind games wise, that is too much. I mean, he made a miss. He made too many miss, and that's all you really can ask for. That that is what really helped them win the World Cup. I would do anything to win the World Cup. I'm sure you guys would do anything to win the World Cup if you were in the same situation. So it really wouldn't make a difference. Uh, yeah, tac tactic wise, you know, there's there's nothing really wrong with mind games unless you're really directly disrespecting a player. But really, your main job as a goalkeeper is to make sure that you keep the ball out of the net. And really, what Martinez did, it, it did it. I mean, he he got the saves he needed, and they took home the trophy. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think in, in the penalties, it was it was fine. But I I think something I also wanted to mention with him was was after the match. Now, I think the majority of, of Argentina players were just grateful to, to be where they were and, and to be able to win the World Cup. Um, and, and, you know, we, we can go into the awards section afterwards, but Martinez took home goalkeeper of the tournament, which, one, I don't think he should have because I think both Livakovic and, and Bunu uh, outperformed him in this tournament. And, yeah, I get they didn't make the final, but – uh, both of those guys, without them, I think their team doesn't go nearly as far as it does. Um, especially, I would say, Lavakovic, considering that they had two penalty shootouts to get there um, and then won both of them largely because of him. Uh, now, I guess you could say the same with Martinez, but Martinez barely made any saves in this tournament. In fact, I think he may have conceded more goals than he had saves. Um, and, and it was not a high number. Uh, I think, yeah, Boudou kept five or six clean sheets on the, on the road to the, the semifinal. Um, and yeah, Morocco was built in their defense. Argentina was not. Argentina was built on the, the brilliance of Lionel Messi. I mean, what's, what's your guys take on, on the goalkeeper of the tournament award? I a hundred percent believe that it should have been Bono. I mean, Lovakovic was, was amazing of course. And so young, he's definitely going to get a big signing um, sooner rather than later. Um, but Bunu, he's been, he's been actually outstanding. He's made some big saves and big moments. He's won them penalty shootouts. And I feel like it's kind of annoying that the only reason that he didn't win the award was because they didn't make it to the finals. I feel like that is unbelievable. Yeah, for sure. And, and I just think that it's, it's, it's tough. Um, Evan, what's your take? Uh, I actually think it should have been Lovakovic that probably should have won because I think with Bunu, what really kind of ruined his chances were just the last two games, the semifinal and then also the third place playoff. I think that just really stumped his chances. But Lovakovic, I think with the situation with him and the teams he went against, I think with that, he should have, I think, had the shout for winning the Golden Glove. Yeah, I would I would agree more, more so with that because I think that especially the Brazil game where – uh, he stood on his head before the shootout. I mean, Brazil threw everything they had at him, and he defended all of it in, except for one break by Neymar, uh, which was a well-taken goal. Lavakovic was, I would say, one of the players of the tournament. And and I think that I heard, last I looked, it was Bayern Munich that were actually sn like looking around him because of the injury to Neuer in a ski accident. Um, 
And I would take Lovakovic over both Alexander Nubel and Sven Ulreich if I was them. Obviously, Hunter's not here. He's the Bayern Munich fan. But uh, I think he would probably agree that that Lovakovic would be a, a stellar signing. Um, but get, getting a little more into, into Martinez, because uh, we're not done with him yet, his post-game celebrations were, were, you know, if the penalty shootout wasn't excessive, his post-game celebrations definitely were. Because he between the fact that he put the trophy in front of a certain area, but also uh, in the locker room uh, during the post-game celebration, when he said, have a moment of silence for Mbappe, like, dude, Mbappe put three past you in the regular game. And then another one past you in the shootout with the flu, the whole French team was not a hundred percent in this match. And they still brought you to the, like the very end. But the fact that he decided to do that, and, you know, taunt one of the world's best players. I think that that was a bit much. I mean, what do you guys think there? Uh, yeah, I think really it was a bit, a bit kind of messed up. But I, I also did see a video of him going over to Mbappe after after the match. And he did console him, really. And Emmanuel Macron was there as well. So I, I don't think really he meant it in an awful way. Like, he, he still respects Mbappe at the end of the day. But I think really... In, in the locker room, that, that was a bit excessive. But uh, what else was I going to say in advance to that? I'm just trying to remember now. Oh, what was I going to say? I can't exactly remember. But really, I, th I think leading up to that, it was also they might have taken offense to, I guess, with what Mbappe said about comma ball and not being as competitive as UEFA and whatnot. So maybe he just kind of took that a little bit personally as to, you know, like, hey, we're here. We won the World Cup. Yeah, I feel as if on the entire ride, they, they were taking things personally. They had a lot of um, controversy with the Netherlands team and that photo that you saw and Messi's, Messi's um, post-game interview um, talking about how they disrespected him and the team. I feel as if I mean, Martinez did overstep his boundaries because after after the game, uh, you have to be respectful to your opponents. Have to be a sort. Uh, you have to be a good winner, even if you are a, um, a sore loser. If you win, you have to win with grace and respect. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think that yeah, I I would say Martinez went just because of how much that what how much I felt that that was excessive. Um, and maybe you know, obviously, I was rooting for France, so maybe I'm a little biased. But I think Martinez just became my least favorite Premier League player. Um, not not even to, like I, I didn't really hate anybody in the Premier League before that, but after that, it was just like, okay, dude, that's that's a little much. Um, you're close God, to relegation with Aston Villa right now, buddy. Like you're you're not in the like. I get you just won the World Cup, but you are not in a place to like you know put yourself above Kylian Mbappe. But he used to play for Arsenal. This kid won a World Cup at 19. Like, come on. Like, he plays for PSG with, with arguably the best trio, including your own teammate, in the world. Like, Mbappe is going places. And he'll probably, yeah, it's like the whole meme where it's like, oh, yeah, you laugh at him, he'll laugh at your bank account. Mbappe will be laughing at Martinez's bank account in 10 years because Martinez will be 38, 39, you know, probably playing in some lowly team in Argentina, in the Argentina, oh, I cannot talk today, Argentina second division, while Mbappe is, you know, 33, probably still playing for PSG, uh, you know, since he has already declined a bunch of offers from other teams, making millions. So I don't, I don't, I don't get it really from Martinez. Um, you know, the fact that you did have to overstep your boundaries, you know, yeah, you get it. You won a world cup. You also just spoke out against somebody who just put four goals past you. So it's, it's one of those moments where it's like, you're just better to just shut up and enjoy the celebration in my opinion, but getting past that, you know, we can go into the, um, to some of the, the, the awards given. So obviously we already talked about goalkeeper of the tournament. Um, but I think uh, I think that the big one would obviously be uh, player of the tournament. So I believe it went to Messi. I don't think. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he won the golden ball. The golden ball went to Messi. So I think that that one's pretty pretty straightforward. I don't I don't really have any any complaints there. I did feel Mbappe played better than him uh, for most of the tournament. A lot of Messi's goals were from penalties, but at the same time. 
uh, it cannot be understated how, how much value he provides to the team. I don't really think that there's any any complaints with that one. I mean, what do you guys think? Yeah, no, uh, it, it was messy. It was always going to be messy winning the golden ball. It was never in doubt for me, really. I think what secured it the most for me was uh, that that run down the field against Croatia and then just giving it into Alvarez. That sealed the deal for me. I'm like, yep, he's won the golden ball. I and can't, then, yeah, I can't disagree with that. Go and ahead, then man. also earlier coming into the group stage, after coming off the Saudi Arabia loss, when they needed him the most, scoring that goal past the chow, oh, my word, that – that also just told me, like, yeah, they're, they're coming for it now. So, no, it, it was it was always going to be messy, never in doubt. Fair enough. Matt, go ahead. Yes, yeah, as long as Argentina was winning, it was always going to be messy. In my opinion, best player of all time, just winning, just finally finishing his resume. If Argentina wins it, it's going to be messy. There's nobody else it could be. Yeah, that's fair. And Mbappe did win the silver ball, so I think that it was kind of down to whoever – won the world cup i think if if france won the world cup it would have been mbappe and if then then silver ball would have been messy um so i i don't there's no real complaints there for me um i think yeah i'm i can go into my i can go into my rant a little more later you that off screen yeah. <laughs> it was yeah I just, uh, just, just, it, it was incredible. I think it was, it was, yeah, it was an absolute prime moment for, for him, for sure. Um, sorry, I got sidetracked a little bit there. It was a, a video playing in the background and I heard that and I thought it was Evan because the guy was British and it kind of sounded like the Irish in the, in the background noise there, but, um, <laughs> um, wow. But the silver boot was, uh, the silver, I mean, the bronze ball, I meant to say the bronze ball was, uh, Luka Modric, um, I think that's fair as well. You know, considering Croatia did win uh, third place. Ah, uh, yeah, Luka Modric. He he had he got himself a a good final tournament. I'd say getting third place, especially coming off you know uh, the the loss four years ago. You know, being able to come back and get just this close. You know, really, I think that that says a lot. And having just, you know, the, the massive impact that he did have when it comes to the Croatian team, really uh, just going through all those games, especially the one against Brazil, that that, that that's rightfully so, his award. Yeah, well, this is where a little bit of my uh, my goalkeeper bias comes in. I think Bono should have won, sh- won it. I believe that he did so much for Morocco. I believe that he was Morocco's best player along alongside Amrabat. And I feel that he did so much for that Moroccan side, and he was so good that he could have that, that he could have deserved it. And I believe that he did deserve it. Yeah, I think there's definitely a case for him. Um, I think there might be a little bit of a little bit of goalkeeper bias because I, I Buna was definitely important to Morocco. Cannot understate that. Um, I think Amrabat was was even their most important player. I mean, without his engine, I just don't see how they get by some, some teams, but I do, I do like the, I do like that he, he was in the conversation. Um, and it's, it's, it's a close one. In the end of the day, I think, I think they went with Modric over uh, Bunu or Amrabat just because of the way that that game played out. Obviously it was two, one to Croatia, um, a great goal from, from Miroslav Orsic to, to seal that one. Uh, I think he meant to do that. I think it was one of those ones where, yeah, it could have been a cross, but I think he meant to put that on frame uh, and just it ended up being a gorgeous curling shot past, you know, one of the goalkeepers of the tournament. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's nothing much more to say about Modric that I didn't say in the last episode. Obviously I'm, I'm a Real fan, so I love the guy. Uh, he's done so much for that, for that team, but uh, he's also done so much for Croatian football. I mean, before him, it was Davor Sukar, uh, you know, considering he was playing during the war and where Modric was growing up. But now Luka Modric has inspired so many uh, young people in even not even just Croatia, but guys that are undersized. Uh, you know, I would say Messi as well. Just just the fact that these types of guys have been able to uh, use use what people said against them as motivation for themselves to boost them, themselves in the career and proving that in this sport, at the very least. Uh, no matter how big or big or small you are, you're you're able to to kind of get in, and if you just work at it, then you can keep keep pushing forward. 
Yeah, I mean, I know many young, my age, young Croatian fans. They all idolize Luka Modric. They all, they all know that he's their their best player. They, they you could see that there's that there's always TikToks, there's videos just of edits of him and and like we miss you and we we thank you for everything. You know, they 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 see him as as a, a, another god to them because he's he's brought them so much throughout all the years. Yeah, Croatian football has a bright future now thanks to those two back-to-back performances at the World Cup. I think now the future will be to, you know, definitely now win it, especially since Mojis has been able to inspire them that they can definitely get top four finishes and even make the final. And really, I think, yeah, having having him as an idol will definitely, you know, bring bring a lot now to the table. Because, like, with me, when I'm growing up, my my personal idol anyway was Steven Gerrard. And I think, you know, <laughs> I think that really inspired a lot of, uh, you know, current players in that squad to, you know, be able to perform to the way they have been now. For example, Trent. So we could definitely see that impact now being seen in the future for Croatia. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, it's just the fact that, that yeah, they're a nation of four million, but they've done so much. Um, and I, I think that they have a very good shot at either the Nations League or the Euros, um, because I think a lot of the Modric aside, a lot of their guys are kind of in their prime. You know, like Andre Kramaric is 31. That's kind of like in the in that time frame where you're like at your best. Um, and then, you know, Brozovic and, and Kovacic are both uh, phenomenal midfielders and guys that I think are going to be in this team for at least a few more years. Um, and now Modric has said that he'll play in the Nations League. He has not confirmed yet if uh, if he's going to play in the Euros. My gut tells me he will. Um, and, you know, maybe he'll retire after that. It's hard to say. Um, but I think Modric can go as long as he wants. But I am fine that he won third place. I don't really have any qualms about that. Um, now, the other award that was awarded in this tournament was the young player of the tournament. Um, and I believe that the, the credentials for this were that you have to be 21 or under, um, which is why Julian Alvarez did not win it because I think if it was 22 or under, he was a shoe in because he was, I mean, he he filled the void that the Argentina striker has not had, uh, during Messi's tenure. Now, obviously they had big names like Gonzalo Higuain or Sergio Aguero, but I think, uh, I think what happened was is where they got it wrong in the past was not using Aguero uh, because Aguero was, I think, a little more clinical than the Niguain. Um, And I'm not just saying that because I like Man City. I think Aguero actually was more clinical looking at it objectively. Um, and I think that that we saw a bit of that this tournament as well uh, with kind of two big name strikers. But I think instead of getting it wrong where they did in 2014, they got it right for this tournament because instead of using Lotaro Martinez, who couldn't uh, hit anything, like that guy was missing shots so bad that you could put him in front of a, like, like a building and like he would just walk right by it. Like, like just ask him to go, ask him to go in the front entrance. He would manage to miss. That's how bad he was during this tournament. And I think if you put, you know, putting Alvarez in was one of the best decisions that Scaloni could have made. But anyways, he didn't win the award. Enzo Fernandez won the award. Um, and I, I think it was a decent, uh, uh, a decent show. Uh, Enzo Martinez, my bad. Enzo Fernandez is a different player. Um, Enzo Martinez won the award. And I think there was a, there was a case for it, but I personally would have given it to Chouamini. I think he was uh, uh, more important for France than Enzo Martinez was for Argentina. Uh, but maybe that's just me. I mean, what do you guys think about that? Yeah, I mean, then again, Argentina did win, and you see a lot of bias towards the team that does win. Um, and Enzo, yeah, he's been he's been he's been amazing, uh, but I think Shuamani did more for the the French national team. Um, but yeah, Argentina did win, so you have to take that into account as well. Uh, I'm gonna be honest. I, I I think FIFA got this right. I I think really what Enzo Fernandez brought to the Argentinian team was enough to, you know, have him win that. Especially with that with that goal also uh, versus Mexico. That that goal was was stunning. I I don't think I've I've seen that great of a goal been scored since by a young players since uh 
oh, what's his name back in 2014? It was against Uruguay. Oh, what's his name? James, James Rodriguez. Yeah, James Rodriguez. That goal was was brilliant, and I could just see a light just like that. It, it the, the it, it really was just just like that goal back then. So I, I think that really also helped him seal the young player award for me. Yeah, yeah and I that's think, that's fair. Go I, ahead, Matt. I, I, yeah, I, I think that I think that goal is kind of being overshadowed by the Richarlison goal. I feel as if the James goal, he um like that was just so iconic. But the Richarlison goal will be iconic, and it was in the same the same uh, like time span, so nobody's really going to be talking about that and as a Fernandez goal. But it was it was brilliant. It was pure class. Yeah, I think I can make the case for Shomini, um because I think that you know if it wasn't for injuries, this guy wouldn't have been in. Uh, I would say he would still make the squad, but he was not going to be in the starting lineup. I think the amount that he had to step up to fill the void of. Uh, whether it be Pogba, Conte, uh, and then going forward with, you know, with the likes of like in Kunku, depending on what the formation was. I think for the amount that Shulmini had to step up was, was massive because he managed to help a team make the final without their starting two midfielders. And I would say arguably France's best two midfielders, uh, even to this day, not just, you know, in 2018, of course, but N'Golo Conte is, is an engine. Now what he does for both France and when he plays for Chelsea, it cannot be understated. Shulmini filled that void perfectly uh, by being that type of engine. Now, uh, and then covering for the blushes of his midfield teammate, which, who I think I don't even know why this guy started in the French team. He had to cover for Rabiot's errors. Like, it's just like, I think I think with Shulmini, I think with the amount he, that he of ground he had to do, filling in for bigger names. I think he absolutely deserved it at, at his young age. Um, but it's, it's hard to say really. I, I, I don't have any qualms about Martinez winning it because yes, that goal was incredible, but I don't know. Part of me just says show many should have, but maybe that's just me. <laughs> uh, I just want to add to, um, you know, the reason why uh, Fernandez won the young player. Cause even in the final, he, he put on a show because he, he led all players with touches because he had 118. And then he also had the most successful passes being 77. And then he also made 10 tackles in the final. And his 10, 10 tackles were the most from a World Cup final since uh, Gattuso did it in 2006. So that that's that's pretty good going, I'd say. Yeah, that's fair. I, I don't have any qualms about that. But another name that was mentioned, too, was uh... – uh, Guardiol, I've always had trouble with his name. Guardiol on uh, Croatia. Now, I think if it wasn't for that Messi goal or Messi assist uh, to, to Alvarez, I think he m- might have had a chance. Um, because it was, I mean, it was a similar case with with Shomini. And, sh- and actually, now that I think about it, Shomini might be 22, but um, he he at 20 years old stepped in for for Vita in the last tournament, and you know as we've seen, Croatia is still good. Um, And and I think that that can't be understated as well. Um, He, I think, had a legitimate chance for it as well, um, considering that they made it as far as they did, uh, beating the likes of Brazil and Japan. Um, I mean, Croatia had a stellar defense this tournament, and he was one of the big leaders of it. So I think that there was definitely a case for him too. But in the end of the day, congrats to Enzo Martinez on winning that. No, No real issues there, just... There were a lot of names uh, for for me. Um, now, I guess as we as we kind of move into it, you no, know, uh, looking at some you know superlatives of of this tournament. So obviously we had the big winner. Um, who do you guys think that the big loser of this tournament was? Uh, whether you know this is including everyone, you know, going into the group stages. Who would you guys say disappointed you the most? Canada. <laughs> Don't even go Denmark. there, buddy. <laughs> Denmark was was the biggest flop. Getting bottom when you were like expected to get to like what the, the quarterfinal, maybe even the semifinal, especially having after having that iconic run in Euro twenty twenty, has to be Denmark. How do you lose to Australia and then not even put one past Tunisia? Unreal. It has to be. Has to be Denmark. Matt, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I agree with that. I feel as if Brazil, Brazil is another one. They, 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 they did, they did get to the quarterfinal, but saying that they were, they were heavy favorites to make it to the final at least. 
Yeah, those are both good shouts. Uh, Denmark is definitely one of them for me as well. Um, they they heavily disappointed me. I had them getting first in their group uh, because I, I thought the World Cup curse was going to catch up to France, so I didn't think France was going to make it. And then obviously they almost won the whole thing again. But um, yeah, Denmark is a good show. Brazil is also a great show because I think I think the the decisions that Tite made some of them were atrocious. I think the biggest one obviously being the fact that Neymar didn't take the crucial penalty uh, instead of, you know, they, they should have had him go instead of Marquinhos, but um, yeah, Brazil was a huge favorite. And I, I, it's funny when I posted them getting out, one of my friends swiped up on my Snapchat story and was like, Oh yeah. Uh, I just lost a lot of money. because <laughs> he better, he better Brazil to win the whole thing. So uh, that, that was stuff. My, uh, my shout is going to be Germany. Um, I think that they they had a high expectations. They have a good squad. Uh, I, again, I had them getting first in their group as well, and they got third and lost to Japan. Uh, and you know, a, they almost lost to Costa Rica as well. It, it, it's it's just the fact that with the players that that team has, you know, from from back to front, considering some of the some of the talent that that team has. Leroy Sané, Jamal Musiala, uh, Neuer was still a decent goalkeeper. Thomas Muller is, yeah, 33, but still in some of the best form of his life. Kimmich, like Goretzka, all these guys in that team, and they can't get more than four points in a group where, frankly, they probably should have gotten at least six. Um, it, 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 heavily disappointing if if I was a Germany fan. Uh, once again, Hunter's not here, so... Uh, he can't he can't really have any qualms that because he, he is part German and did, did root for Germany. But I think that that would be his shout as well. I think he would say Germany, uh, considering the fact that, yeah, they didn't make it out of the group. Now, Matt, I know you jokingly said Canada, but um, hey, listen, the, considering the fact that we got put in with uh, FIFA just updated their rankings. The fourth best team in the world, the seventh best team in the world and the 11th best team in the world. And the fact that we didn't win, I'm not even mad anymore because like we 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 got drawn in with two semifinalists and Belgium. So I, yeah, I, I then again, also, I, I can't even be mad about that. Yeah, I, and then again, also Belgium is a good shout as well for um. Yes. <laughs> yeah, going into the tournament, they were one or two, right? They were they were I second. They were, one. they were oh, they were second. Bra- Brazil oh, yeah. was first. Uh, Belgium was second. Yeah. yeah, even being second, that is that is crazy to go out that early. And uh, I, I don't know. I still don't understand Lukaku leaving Inter just killed his career. It killed it. He's um, he was just a beast. He was an absolute unit. Um, he goes to Chelsea, loses his form, loses his confidence, goes into this World Cup, plays minimal minutes, and the minutes that he has, he has three big chances and misses all of them. So his confidence now is just down the drain, and I'm I, I feel bad for him. And I wonder if he's going to regain his confidence or I wonder if he's just going to tank. Yeah. Belgium's also a great shout for that. Um, and yeah, Lukaku is, is one where it's, you, you do wonder if his career is going to get back on track. Obviously he's struggled with injuries this season, but uh, it's, it's tough to say it really is. Um, and yeah, no, Belgium is a good shout too, because they frankly should have lost to Canada. Canada outplayed them for by and far the first half and, and parts of the second half. Um and and frankly, Canada should have had two more penalties than what they were given. So, you know, looking at that objectively, yeah, I mean, they – and obviously if it wasn't for Courtois, Canada would have scored first in that game. Um, yeah, no, Belgium's definitely a good show. There was a lot of disappointing teams in here. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's, that's completely fair. Um, and I think the final one we'll do is uh, goal of the tournament. I – think we'll all be in agreement here i don't think there's really any uh shouts about that one but uh i'm gonna go with richarlison i think that that bicycle kick was i mean it it was i mean it was more of a scissor kick but that was phenomenal (laughs) it pains me to say it It absolutely pains me to say it he is my least favorite footballer on the planet as a liverpool fan he's an absolute uh, it pains me to say it He's a menace, but Richarlison. It just, I loved it when the Nottingham Forest player just killed his knee. <laughs> just just went into that tackle. You saw that tackle? I, I did see uh, that, that, yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that made me so happy to see, but uh, it was a heck of a goal. 
Yeah, it's it's it's, it's for Charlotte, and it, it's it's it, it. I don't even know who else could have been really, but I I can't believe that this guy used to play for Everton, and now he plays for Tottenham. Like, is are we sure this is the same player that plays that plays for Tottenham right now? I I I don't think it is because he, he he's on a whole different level when he's playing for Brazil. And he also could have had another potential goal of the tournament with that one versus, uh, what, what was it? South Korea. Yeah, it was, it was South Korea. Yeah. The way he like, he had like a touch on his head and his leg, like what multiple times. And then he that ran was in beautiful. That, that goal was really nice as well. Um, because yeah, he, he touched it to himself. I think it was three or four times passed it, got the return was clean in and just put it right by the keeper. Like, that was yeah. That was a great. That's a good show too. But you could make the argument oh. that's better than the one that he scored versus uh ah uh, no. I, I I don't think it was, but I can see the I can see if somebody made the argument for that, I could see it. I could see it. Yeah, and also the um the striker on Cameroon. I'm forgetting his name right now. Abu Bakr. Yeah, Abu Bakr. The one that he uh, the chip he, the chip the oh, keeper. Sh- yep. That was, that one was beautiful nice too. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking Richarlison, and and yeah, to to speak a little bit about him, it's kind of yeah, it's true, because yeah, yeah, he's been an absolute bum since he's moved from from Everton to Tottenham, uh, and yeah, he hasn't he he's not a guaranteed starter on that team, and it's a team that, you know, several guys have played the right wing position, but um, yeah, I mean that's a that's a talking point for another day, but yeah, I I think that 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 scissor kick was good. I actually saw a goal similar to that one. Uh, in the MLS where it was uh, I was watching the New England Revolution play Atlanta United and uh, Joseph Martinez on on Atlanta had a took it right out of the air from across a scissor kick right into the the corner of the goal it actually did win goal of the year for MLS uh, in that season so you guys should check it out but um, I I managed to see that live so that was the closest thing I'll see to this for Charleston goal and yeah no that thing was awesome Uh, it did I believe it won goal of the tournament I don't really think there's too many uh too many too many worries about that but uh that'll do it for us today that is all i i got and uh yeah thank you guys for coming on so so much we wrapped up the world Cup talk yeah for sure man we talked a lot about uh the the final some of the superlatives some of the awards a little bit about the fact that emiliano martinez is definitely going to be viewed differently now um and yeah no congrats to argentina and especially to Lionel messi for winning the world cup uh he he deserves it and uh, hopefully I don't see it too much on my feed, but we'll see what happens there until next time. I am Grayson Mortimer. I'm Evan McGuire. And I'm Matthew Kaiser. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>